morning and welcome to another episode of Collectibles Chat. I'm Steve Zarelli. Auto pens. If you're an autograph collector, hopefully you know what they are. It's one of the many landmines that you need to navigate in the autograph collecting hobby. We're going to take a closer look at them, help you identify them, and dispel some common myths as well. I'll also have a collectibles tip at the end of this video. Thanks for joining me. And let's go. So what is an auto pen? An auto pen is a machine that based upon a template created from someone's real signature will sign their name. Essentially, you have a metal armature that will hold a real pen and following this matrix that's based on someone's signature, it signs their name. Auto pens as we know them today were invented sometime in the 1940s. However, they didn't come into wider use until the late 1950s. At that time, politicians started using them. The NASA astronauts obviously used auto pens to respond to their mail. And over the years, we've seen Hollywood celebrities use them, authors use them. Uh, we even recently had incidents where Hillary Clinton had a book signing and uh, supposedly brought all these books that were signed in advance. So she was handing them out. It was later discovered they were all auto pen signatures. There's been speculation that a Michelle Obama signed book that was sold through Barnes & Noble online indeed bears auto pen signatures. At this time, none of the major authenticators will pass these books. And in 2016, when Donald Trump was running for president, they issued a commemorative edition of The Art of the Deal uh, that donors would get if they had donated a certain amount to his campaign. These commemorative editions all had auto pen signatures. The takeaway is this. If you're dealing with a celebrity who supposedly signs through the mail or through other sources, there's always a risk that it could be an auto pen. So be warned. Now that you know that auto pens are a risk, well, how do you avoid them? The key to avoiding them is understanding how the machine works and the characteristics you need to look for to avoid auto pen signatures. The first one is this. As I mentioned earlier, the auto pen signs based upon a program template. So what that means is it essentially signs the same signature every single time. Once you identify an auto pen pattern and what an auto pen signature looks like, when you find a near exact match to that, well, you know that must also be an auto pen signature because a human will never sign the same way twice. You can sign your name a thousand times and there's always going to be some significant differences between your signatures, whether it's a slight formation change or the spacing or the proportion of letters. It's almost impossible to sign your name exactly the same way twice as a real human. But with a machine, it's going to do it the same way every single time. So that's the first trick in identifying auto pen signatures. Another characteristic of auto pen signatures is that they are very uniform. I call it like it has a dead flat look to it. There's no variation in pressure or speed throughout the signature. It's like it was applied very uniformly and evenly, and it just doesn't look natural. The other thing to look out for is in some cases, uh, you can identify kind of like a quivering or a, what I, it's the machine armature probably vibrating as it's going through the signature. Uh, you don't see it at arm's length, but on close exam, you can kind of see this quivering look. This Apollo 11 signed lithograph is a good example that shows many auto pen traits. Let's take a closer look. We'll start with the Armstrong autograph. You can see this unusual quivering or vibration throughout the signature. This is not something you'd expect to see in a hand signed autograph. This is from where the armature was vibrating as it was signing. You can see it throughout the entire signature, very unnatural looking. Collins demonstrates some of the same traits. You can see it here in the L and the back of the C, how it quivered. Looking at the Aldrin, this is really kind of a mess here. I don't know what happened, but you have weird quivering and it's, it's malformed. This is not something you would ever see in a hand-signed autograph. 
This Apollo 12 is another example that shows the auto pen effect. It's really evident in the Gordon signature. Much quivering and vibration as the armature chugged its way slowly through the signature. You can see that throughout. Very unnatural looking. No smoothness or flow. Sometimes authentic signatures can be mixed in with auto pens. This STS-99 shuttle crew is an example of that. You have a hand-signed Janus Voss and a hand-signed Thiel. Yet the Mori, Kriegel, Gori, and Cavande are all signed by AutoPen. On the hand-signed examples, you can see there's a variation in pressure, there's a smoothness to them. And looking at the auto pens, they're all very flat and dead looking. No variation in pressure. All four of the auto pens are signed with the same exact pressure as each other. And you can kind of see the quivering and the strange machine effect throughout as well. As a professional authenticator, not a week passes by where someone doesn't contact me and say, well, so-and-so said this was an auto pen and, you know, I see a difference here. I don't think it is. So let's dispel this myth right away. Theoretically, auto pen signatures should all be identical. However, that's not the reality of the matter. If you have a signature that's like, you know, 95% identical, but there's one little line that's a tiny bit different than another line, you know, you can't say, oh, that's not an auto pen. That's absolutely untrue. They're probably both auto pens. If things overlap 95% and there's just a tiny variation, that's probably just because it went through the auto pen machine and the armature wiggled some way or someone shoved it through too quickly. You know, these kind of things create small variations that can be differences between auto pens. But if the whole rest of the thing matches up and it still has that auto pen look, I'll tell you, it's an auto pen. Here, let's take a look at this. Here's an example of two Apollo 17 signed presentations. These were both signed by auto pen machines using the same patterns. However, there's some slight differences. Let's take a closer look. You can see the Schmitz are identical. Exactly what you'd expect to see with two auto pen signatures. Looking at the Evans, there are some differences. You can see the curl in the R and the shape of the R is slightly different, although the O-N is identical. And the same with Evans. The E is slightly different in the little curly Q on the top, yet the rest of the last name is exactly the same. These were both signed by the same auto pen pattern. And looking at the Cernan, you can see significant differences. The Cernan is exactly the same, yet look at the difference in the G's. Yet these were both signed by the same auto pen machine, and they're certainly auto pens. This is what happens when the armature vibrates differently or it's run through the machine inconsistently. There can be slight differences. So just because there's a tiny difference in an auto pen signature doesn't mean that it's not an auto pen. To sum it up, you need to understand how the auto pen works. And that helps you understand the characteristics you may see in auto pen signatures if it matches an established auto pen pattern. If the signature has that flat, dead look with no variation in pressure or speed throughout. And lastly, if it has that weird kind of micro quivering look on close exam, chances are you have an auto pen. And now for a collectibles tip. My advice to you is don't follow the herd. In episode five, I mentioned focus on quality rather than quantity. And this is kind of a related corollary to that. You know, you, you'll see things in the marketplace all the time. And what I call them is like mass produced collectibles. And, you know, they may be very nice. You know, look at, you know, oh, Steiner's having a signing and, you know, they have Jeter signed photograph. You know, and they there's like a thousand of the same photograph, exactly the same. Eh, I mean, it's nice and all, but, you know, do, wouldn't you rather have like a vintage signed Jeter that's like kind of unique and rare? Um, you know, so, you know, don't follow the herd, you know have discriminating taste. 
I ran into an interesting situation this last week. I posted the, uh, the book that had 33 astronaut signatures on Instagram. So some guy responded like, oh, I want that. I'd love it someday. And, you know, I kind of, you know, jokingly replied, well, then just buy it. Right. And he replied back to me. He said, I'm 12 years old. I can't buy it. And, I, you know, kind of like blew me away a bit. Like, wow, this kid is 12 years old and he's he's really got good taste. He's got better taste than a lot of much more seasoned collectors. Like this was a really unique vintage item. And this kid was, you know, 12 years old and he's interested in it. I said, you know, I replied back saying, man, you know, for 12, you're doing great. You know, stick with it. And someday you're going to have a world class collection. So, you know, don't follow the herd. Don't, you know, buy the latest, you know, mass produced output from, you know, some company that just does, you know, tons of private signings. I mean, not that there's a, there's nothing wrong with that stuff. But if you really want to have a unique, special collection, um, that's going to turn people's eyes, you know, look for unique items. Look for not just quality, but things that are different. So, you know, something to consider. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. I have my links at the bottom. I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, happy collecting.